Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For this tutorial, we're going to demo the basic data validation test script in Oracle. The basic implementation simply runs each test case and outputs to screen what you see now. Look at the red highlight box surrounding test case number three on screen. Notice that the results display the test ID number, the status, and the test description. So first, a quick level set. Let's open github.com slash data research labs. And we're going to browse to the SQL scripts, scroll down on the page, go to the data validation scripts, scroll down on the page. We're going to find Oracle. And under Oracle, we want the basic validation scripts. So we're going to click that. And we're going to work through the steps and how to use the validation script. So let's start with step number one, download and install Oracle SQL Developer. It's free, so it's a really good tool to use to run your SQL. And uh, if it's not already installed in your machine, uh, just go ahead and click this. I'll pop it open. There it is, Oracle SQL Developer, and you pick the appropriate one, download it, and follow the instructions. Moving along to step number two, we want to download and deploy the demo data so you can run the script against it. And in this GitHub uh, site, there's two different URLs. I guess I'll pop it open. The first one is going to be to create all the table structures. So you would copy paste that out and execute it. And the third, uh, the second one is to copy paste the script out and insert all of the test data. That'll get you set up so you can run the script. Step three to download the basic data validation script. Just on the website, click that link, and then you can click in there, control A, control C, and copy the whole script. Moving along to step number four, you should review and understand the basic script. But I'm just gonna skip ahead and demo it for you. The script is over a thousand lines long. Lines one to 44 are just a comment block header. And then 45 onward, the test cases start and the way to the end, 1,123 test cases. I'm gonna go ahead and control find T031, jump to test case 31, and we'll talk through that. It's a typical data validation test. It uh, is validating that there's no carriage return or line feed characters in the last name column across all rows. Notice the following aspects of how the SQL is written. There's a, uh, each test case is separated clearly with comments. There's one or more inner queries, these lines here, and these return many detail rows with business logic data validation applied. The columns returned vary by the validation test case, but there's typically a primary key, like in this case last name or unique key, some value returns so you can easily identify which row failed. Oh, that status field on the internal typically has a rejection code with details of the failure. In this case, the last name has a line feed and it even tells you the position in the last name field of where that bad character occurs. So it helps you in troubleshooting. That's the point of this inner status field. And let's just go highlight and run that and see it work. So we run this and we get all the rows and they're all passes. The outer query these lines here <clears throat> and here serve the purpose of rolling up all the detail rows that we just saw into a single summary row, returns a test ID. Let me just run it and then you can see. It's gonna return the test ID so you know where in the SQL script it, the error occurred. It's gonna return a pass or fail and then the test description. And if there were a fail, it would tell you well, it would just say fail. In this particular basic script, it's not gonna give you any other details in a fail, and it's up to you to come in here and highlight and run and look up the details. In the advanced script, which will be the next video, the output will actually tell you exactly what failed, exactly what the expected natural results were, et cetera. But the simple script doesn't do that because it keeps, that way it keeps the SQL test simple. The advanced script is three or four times as big per test case. On to step number five, executing the basic data validation script. If you open SQL Developer, you have your script here. It's really important that you run this particular button, not this one, because this will run the entire script. This will just run what's highlighted. And then you get your test results down here that we've already discussed with the test ID status and description. So here we are, Oracle SQL Developer script is loaded. 
and we're going to click this button. So let's do that. There we go. Now all of our results are nice and concisely laid out. And there we go. The test ID, test one, two, three, pass, description, etc. Get a nice automated test run with 66 test cases in it. And finally, the next steps, how to build your own data validation test scripts. So here's my recommendations. I would take the script that's out on the GitHub website and use that as a reference, put it up in, say, your left-hand monitor, and then I would open up SQL Developer on your right monitor and get a script started and ready to go, and then just start table one. So start with table number one, and in table number one, it could be alphabetical or whatever order you want to uh, write test cases for your tables, but definitely for each table, start with rule set number one, the row count test cases, and then that's table level, and then jump to rule set number eight, diff checks, because that's also table level. Rule set number two, the foreign keys, primary keys, unique keys, well, no primary keys, but the unique keys, definitely do those next, because that's also table level, and those are tests five to seven. And now you start to dip down into field level tests, but the perspective is from the table level. So the rule set number three is the heuristics. So you're checking in one single pass the null rates of all of the fields. And then rule sets number four and seven, that's the bulk of your validation checks. And those are field by field. Numeric field type tests, date field type tests, and text field type tests and the regular expression test. So I would bundle all those together field by field and where possible, the best practice talked about doing the table scan, quote unquote, test case, uh, which is test case 65. I take the one table and bundle all of the field checks into one big script where possible for performance. And then <clears throat> after all that's done, I would uh, these steps here all the way through 10, I would loop back and do the next table, repeat the process. Table level checks first, field level checks bundled together. Next table, repeat, next table. At the end of all that, then I would tack on specific defect regression tests. In practice over the years at various companies, I have used this technique, and usually I use the advanced script, but anyway, I've used this technique of having a script and I've gotten 5,000 or more lines of SQL in big scripts that run in 15, 20, 30 minutes and you run them daily and they just fly through and check everything for you and it's fantastic for regression. You can find problems that surface that you otherwise wouldn't find until days or weeks later. But you don't have to put it all in one script. Sometimes I break it down and each table gets its own script and that way it's not, the scripts aren't unwieldy and giant. So it just depends on what your needs are. You can break it down however you want. Thank you for watching and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and subscribe. Also check out our other videos and related playlists in the boxes to the right.